guys welcome back to a to z dentistry and our today's topic is medium rhomboid glossitis so without any further ado let's get started so today we will be studying about median rhomboidal glossitis under the following subheads firstly we will be looking at the synonyms followed by definition pathogenesis etiology clinical features diagnosis and the treatment plan so median rhomboid glossitis is also known as central papillary atrophy of the tongue now this is because as you can see in this picture in the central area that is just anterior to the circumvallate papillae there is a lesion which appears rhomboid in shape and this region is characterized by lack of papilla right in this region there is no papilla seen therefore it is known as central papillary atrophy of the tongue moving on to the definition so now uh, the definition of this lesion basically explains about its pathogenesis also so basically it is a form of developmental defect wherein there is a incomplete descent of the tubercular m part and also there is an entrapment of a portion between two fusing lateral halves of the tongue so we all know that the tongue basically develops due to the fusion of two lateral lingual swellings and tubercular empire is a structure which also plays a significant role in development of the tongue now sometimes in some individuals what happens is that the tubercular empire does not descend completely and leaves behind a small area right where it is devoid of the descent of the tubercular empire which basically leads to this lesion so now basically it is a benign lesion of the tongue right it has no malignant potential and it is characterized by a rhomboid or an oval shaped area right and in this particular area which is rhomboid shape there are certain characteristic changes that we can clinically see that is this area is basically devoid of any papillae and it is just in the midline right and it lies anterior to the foramina cecum so the definition is quite comprehensive and also if we uh, thoroughly remember this definition then we can write about its pathogenesis as well as some clinical features also moving on to the pathogenesis now here i have put up two pictures right so in the first picture what we are able to visualize is the development of the tongue okay so we can see there are two lateral lingual swellings and interposed between them is nothing but our tubercular empire and this is image at 4 weeks of development now immediately below it is the image at 5 weeks of development wherein we can clearly appreciate that there is a gradual increase in the size of two lateral lingual swellings and gradually they are trying to merge together right now merging of these two lateral swellings will give rise to our tongue but what lies interposed between them is tubercular empire now we can imagine that the fusion of these two swellings is giving rise to our tongue what would happen if this interposed tubercular empire will not retract or withdraw itself at the correct point of time yes of course there will be some kind of developmental anomaly which will occur in the tongue and this is nothing but our median rhomboidal glossitis so now basically the pathogenesis is that there is abnormality of a tongue wherein there is a failure of tubercular empire to retract or withdraw itself just before the fusion of lateral halves of the tongue so obviously what would happen is that there will be a structure which would be formed that will be devoid of the papillae right and this is nothing but our median rhomboidal glossitis so now clearly according to pathogenesis it is a congenital anomaly of the tongue moving on to the various etiological factors for median rhomboid glossitis the number one is the developmental cause right it is basically due to persistence of tubercular empire or failure of withdrawal of tubercular empire before the fusion of two lateral halves of the tongue second cause is fungal infection right so now candida albicans is the fungi which is mainly attributed uh, in this lesion right and in various uh, biopsies candida albicans has been consistently 
uh, found in such type of lesions right so now this type of lesion is therefore was previously also known as posterior midline atrophy candidiasis because this structure lied just posterior to the midline that is anterior to our circumvallate papillae and it was associated with candida albicans therefore it was named so and the last cause is the metabolic causes right now this lesion is more commonly associated with diabetes so now in diabetic subjects what happens is that there is a kind of immunodeficiency which develops gradually as it is a systemic condition right so now we know that candida is a type of fungi which usually is associated with immunodeficient subjects so now this can be implicated in this lesion as well as in diabetes the immunity is already compromised and candida tends to accumulate in a particular area over the tongue because of the inherent systemic defect which is present moving on to the clinical features now this lesion is more common in males rather than females the ratio is 3 is to 1 now it is also more common in adults with the age ranging from 15 to 84 years right now regarding the site predilection it is located just anterior to the foramen cecum on the dorsum of the tongue in the midline and it lies just anterior to the word circumvalid papilla now clinically we can easily differentiate this lesion from other lesions because of its characteristic appearance moving on to the various symptoms associated with this lesion now basically majority of the subjects are asymptomatic right but in some cases there might be a complaint of pain and ulceration also the rest of the tongue may appear coated or matted that is because of presence of candida albicans which is a very frequent finding in such patients moving to the appearance basically as the name suggests it appears as an ovoid diamond or a rhomboid shaped reddish patch or somewhat like a plaque like appearance on the dorsum of the tongue which lies immediately anterior to our circumvalid papillae in some cases it may appear flat or slightly raised right and this lesion might appear slightly you know elevated from the rest of the surface of the tongue because it has no filiform papillae in that particular area so its characteristic features are like very prominent and it can be easily distinguished before moving on to some another interesting clinical features please don't forget to like subscribe and share and hit the bell icon for more such interesting videos stay tuned moving on to the surface now basically the surface appears dusky red and it is completely devoid of any filiform papillae it is usually a smooth surface because there is no papillae right the texture may be reddish smooth or even it may have a granular lobulated or an indurated surface if at all it is associated with any kind of ulceration now this particular uh, lesion is generally characteristic of median glossitis that is known as kissing lesion now this occurs basically because the lesion itself which is located on the dorsum of the tongue when it comes in contact with the soft palate it causes soft palate erythema right now this soft palatal erythema is usually seen just above where our lesion of medial rhomboid glossitis touches the palate now since it is a lesion which is located on dorsum of the tongue and during various activities our tongue comes in contact with the soft palate the lesion might you know uh, somewhat dup may appear as duplicated over the uh, surface of the soft palate and this is known as kissing lesion do remember this uh, sometimes the question may be just asked to you as write about kissing lesion so you must know that median rhomboid glossitis is closely associated with the term kissing lesion moving on to the diagnosis right so now clinically it is very easy to diagnose this lesion right because of its characteristic appearance as we have talked about previously it is a area which is located on dorsum of the tongue right just anterior to the uh, circumvalid papillae okay it is rhomboid in shape it appears as dusky red in color 
it may have a granular or sometimes even a lobulated surface but mostly it appears as a smooth lesion devoid of any filiform papillae sometimes we might see that the adjacent areas of the tongue appear quite matted now this is because of the presence of candida albicans which is a frequent finding in this lesion so clinically it is very easy to diagnose such a lesion right however we must go for some laboratory diagnosis as well in this subjects right now we have to take a biopsy whenever we have to go for a laboratory diagnosis so now biopsy of such a lesion basically shows loss of papillae and there is a varying degrees of hyperkeratosis as we can clearly visualize in the second picture right there is clear cut hyperkeratosis which is present Apart from it, we can see that uh, there is a proliferation of the spinous layer and there is a bulbous elongation of the retiregis, right? And in many cases, these retiregis appear as if they are clubbed into each other, right? They appear in very quite close proximity to each other and there is a characteristic elongation of this retipex. Apart from it, uh, various amounts of inflammatory exudate or inflammatory cells may be present in this lesion we might find candida hypi if at all uh, it uh, the lesion has a superimposed candida albicans infection now let's move on to the last part of this video that is the management of such condition right so basically uh, the most common line of treatment is by prescription of antifungal agents right and especially when we have found a positive relation between candida and such type of lesion we have to treat it with certain antifungal agents now the most popular antifungal agents used for the treatment include nystatin amphotericin b meconazole clotrimazole and ketoconazole now basically uh, these antifungal agents will resolve only the super infection which is associated with this lesion it will not bring about any change or any regression in midline rhomboid glossitis right now in case uh, the lesion is a very long standing or chronic one then we may opt for a cryosurgery and especially in such cases an excisional biopsy is indicated that is because we have to rule out any chances of malignancy associated with such lesions so that was all about median rhomboid glossitis thank you for watching this video and if you like this please do not forget to like subscribe and share this video with your friends and do not forget to hit that bell icon so that you know every time i upload a new video thank you